Hello fans and welcome to another edition of Reflections. Now it's not too often I get to make this introduction and I'm making this introduction with all sincerity as a pro wrestling fan my whole life. Sitting beside me is one half of the greatest tag team in the history of professional wrestling. Road Warrior Animal, thanks for being here. What's up man, how you doing bro? Good man, do you, uh, launching off that, do you feel you're the greatest tag team in the history of the business? Uh, I'll tell you a funny story. When I, when I first got in, and I wasn't even tagging with Hawk yet, uh, I was in a battle royal for Jim Crocker Promotions. And I uh, was in a battle royal with Roddy Piper. Right. And like a dummy. I was supposed to be out number five, and I ended up being like number eight <laughs> or ten. Or, I was waiting there way too long. I should have been in there. Right. What is he doing in there, kid? Get out of here. Piper threw me out. So I'm sitting there, and I'll never forget the Holiday Inn in Richmond, Virginia. And I was really nice and cordial, like like young guys should be in the wrestling business. Hey, Mr. Piper, how you doing? Joe Lauren, I said, I know you are, kid. Sit down here. He goes, let me buy you a drink. I couldn't even afford a drink. I was just trying to get a glass of water. I literally lived off a bag of pretzel sticks and a half a gallon of milk for a week. Right. I was making no money. I was making $150 working seven days a week. That was my total pay. Right. I was getting so hosed at the time, right? Piper goes, let me buy you this. You want a hamburger? I'll buy you a hamburger. And he goes, so what do you expect out of the wrestling business? And I said, well... I said, it's amazing what you do and the control you have with the people. I hope to someday be able to be half as good as that. And Piper looked right at me and says, kid, I don't know if you got what it takes. Wow. I said, talk about a jab in the heart. I felt, <laughs> I felt like knocking him out right there. You right. Know? Rick Martel is sitting there, you know, majeure in French, you know, like French Canadian. He goes, well, you know, I hear you're bad mouthing the business, and he goes, "I just want to give you a fair warning." So that was going around that you were like, "Well, I, in the in the area there in the AWA because right. I knew Henning real well and everything else, and I was, yeah, I was pissed off. Yeah, I mean, I was pissed off. Were you that, vocal at a young age? Like, would you like go? Yeah, man. And... I, I, listen, I'm a Philly guy. If I didn't like right. something, I was going to let you know I didn't like it. I'm not right. going to wait ten minutes. I'm going to let you know now. Right. I'd rather take care of the situation now. Don't let it fester, because it's fester, it's really going to get ugly. Hmm. You know, so I want to take care of it. So Rick Martell actually said something, being really nice, and I said, listen here, champ. I said, see that belt you got out there in your in your car, in your bag? I said, how about we go outside and I take it from you right now? <laughs> and I, I, I was dead serious. I said, I will take it, then I will hit you with it, and I will not even think twice about doing it. And I, I was so pissed at the time. He goes, no, 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 I'm just giving you a fair warning. I said, well, yeah, warning taken. Good. Thanks, man. And that was it. Wow. And then shortly after that, it's what Ole Anderson came back in the bar, saw a picture of Hawk, he, and asked that Sharky, where'd you get this picture of Joe? And he says, that's, no, that's Mike. He goes, there's two of these guys? He goes, oh, I got a great idea, the Road Warriors. You know, right. so and that's how the Road Warriors became the team. But I'll tell you what, one way I know he did. He knew what we were making and what we needed to make and what we deserved to make by the time we came in there as a team. And he pulled the old, oh, well, you're a team, so I can't pay you what like a single guy would be paying. I got to split it up because there's two of you. And I was thinking to myself, that's crap because we're selling <laughs> a lot of merchandise. Right. You're selling hundreds of millions of dollars of merchandise of us. Come on, you know. So he says, okay. I said, well, as long as you make what we were making when we were singles, and in the first year, we made 100 grand less hmm. than what he shook hands on. We said, hey, man, you said we were going to make this. I'll make it up to you the second year. It was a hundred grand less again. So now we're short about 200 grand each working for Vince. Right. So that's where Hawks start getting really pissy and saying, you know, screw Vince. If I want to go party and I want to go drink, I'm going to go party and drink. This gr I'm a grown ass man. He goes, Vince is screwing us on pay. I'm going to go do this. Were people in the office trying to turn the screws on Hawk and keep him on the straight and narrow? Well, I was trying to because he's my partner. Man. Right. I was trying to keep him on the straight and narrow, you know. But, but yeah, they, they tested him a lot. And they came and told him he pissed dirty a couple of times, which we both, we both knew he wasn't dirty. Right. And Hawk said, test me again. I'll tell you right now I'm not dirty. I can promise you I'm not dirty. Hmm. And, you know, but then again, but Hawk was bucking the system, you know. He, and I try to tell Hog, listen, man, you work for 3M or Honeywell or any of those companies, you got rules and regulations you got to abide by. But Hawk just didn't want to do it. He goes, man, this guy's screwing us up, pay animal. I'm sick of this crap. And then finally, when the straw broke the camel's back was in SummerSlam 92. And, you know, at Wembley Stadium, Hawk flipped out. Right. 
Uh, going, but before we get uh, any, any further in that, is talking money. The merchandise machine back then was cranking. Oh, underwear, bed sheets, pillowcases. Yeah. Uh, you eat Jackets, backpacks, lunchboxes, styro- everything. Styrofoam shoulder pads. Styrofoam shoulder pads, which I brought to the company. The guy from Janko Corporation in Connecticut, I was on a plane flight. He goes, hey, I say, what, you ever thought about making foam rubber shoulder pads for kids? What a great idea. And so they came with the press, and they even did signatures in the pad. Right. And uh, they sold, they're still selling them in the UK somewhere. <laughs> so, But they're selling like for 250 bucks now. Was back then, they were only like $18. Right. right? And... Uh, yeah, and they sold a ton of them, man. They they made so much money marketing, bro. You know, we lost out on a lot of money. The Hall of Fame. How did that come about? Because it seems like you're not in good standing with whoever. I mean, with Vince or whoever is making those decisions. You know, I I never had any heat with anybody there. I mean, I know Hawk pissed off a lot of people because, especially the way he quit. Right. You know, here we go. We we're supposed to be one of the main events for the title in SummerSlam, and then, to be quite honest with you, he was all plastidilled up on pills and. And they moved us from like second to last match to second match, right. first match. And but you know when you watch it back though, you see who the people came to see. I mean, it was freaking deafening. You still to got start, the loudest. start on the show, man. It's the loudest pop of the whole night, and uh, we felt bad. But I mean, Vince was pissed. I, mean, I could see him in there talking to Hawk during the re. You know, we went over the entrance because the entrance is about 150 yards long mm-hmm. with the motorcycles. They wanted to make sure Hawk was okay to drive the bike. And, you know, Vince was so pissed because Hawk was messed up. I think he got mad at me because nothing I could do about it. I was straight. I was always straight. Right. I was, I was always the business guy. Every finish, everything we did with wrestling, I was the guy they came to, and I would tell Mike what we're doing. I would tell Hawk what we're doing. And, but that's the way we always worked it, you know? Did that, did that come, become frustrating for you, like, like all the... Uh irresponsibilities of Hawk falling on your shoulders. Listen, man, yeah, you know, I love my partner. I mean, we of were course. like brothers, of course. of course. But like like every relationship or whatever, there's always something that, I'm sure there's some stuff that I did that pisses him off. And when he did that, and he would always come apologize and everything else, but he, I don't think he knew to the gravity, except right before he died, how much that screwed us out of millions of dollars. Right. Because, you know, you, sometimes you got to look at the big picture and say, listen, man, to do this drug or do this this day is that really worth it to take million dollars out of your pocket down the line and that's what ended up happening right all kind of comes by me like a blur now i knew haku from he did sumo in japan and we got in the wrestling business and he would speak japanese to the japanese boys all of a sudden he gets his the head guy down for whatever gang they were and he went like that and bro he had his finger behind the guy's eye and told him said brother I'm going to eat that eyeball if you don't stop. Tell your boys to stop. Which kind of pretty much, I don't want to say saved all our butts, but we didn't really have to do anything. After right. Haku did that, everybody backed off and left. Right. So, yeah, but that's that was Haku. Haku, I would say, if there's anybody in a wrestling business that would never I'd want to have to fight, it would be Haku. Right. What about Sags? Sags is another deceiving one, bro. Sags hits like a freaking mule. <laughs> right. he, beat, he beat up, I hate to say it, Kenny Shamrock's a good friend of mine. He beat up Shamrock. I don't know if it was Scott Hall or, or Nash. He ran after Nash. Nash didn't want to fight him one time. Sags don't care. Right. He's your typical Pennsylvania guy from Allentown that doesn't give a crap. You know, and he, he's another one of those Slavic guys. I think well, he's a Yugoslavian or something like that, right? Yeah. I think. And, uh, you know, Sag is another guy that's just is a big guy, man. And he's a big, fat. See, that's the thing in our <laughs> business. People don't realize how fast the big guys can actually get. Andre's sitting there, and, of course, he's drinking a bottle of wine, which literally, it was a big bottle, and this is his hand on the bottle of wine looking about that big. Right. Couldn't even see the label on the wine. His hands were so monstrous, right? And so I'm sitting there, and behind me comes Flair. Now, Flair sees me sitting there, like, and I'm 320. He comes in, and he starts cracking up. And I said, what are you laughing at, you idiot? Like, Dex, I know no flair for a lot of years. Right. He goes, you look like a ventriloquist dummy on Andre's knee. <laughs> That's how big Andre was. Right. Andre was freaking monstrous, and just his head and his hands. You know, my hand was sitting next to his in a bar, and his, his looked like two of mine sitting there. And it, it, that was one of my other experiences with Andre, man. Then he made me go eat two Chinese dinners back-to-back because he wanted to go drink. <laughs> that was another one. Interesting. You, you. I just get done eating, and he goes, "You boss, he called everybody boss, boss." Yeah, yeah, boss. Because you got to call him boss back. Right. 
And uh, he goes, uh, you hungry? I said, bro, I just got done eating a sizzling steak. He goes, no, no, you need to eat more. I'm going, oh, no, but nobody tells Andre no. You don't right. want to get him on the bad side. Yeah, so that's what I heard. So I was still relatively young. I said, okay, whatever you want to do, Andre, Andre, let's go. I went back again, and he drank two bottles of wine, and I had another sizzling steak dinner. And that was it. I said, now I'm stuffed. Now I want to go up and sleep for two days. I got so much red meat <laughs> right. in me. Right. I can't breathe right now, you right. know? Yeah, and that was my other, my third story with Andre, man. I, yeah, I, we got along good with Andre. Did everybody, did people walk on tippy toes around him? Oh, yeah. yeah. If Andre didn't like you, man, he'd just slam you in the middle of the ring and sit on you and fart in your face. Right. He well, would do that to guys. Really? Oh, yeah. What are you going to do? You and got a 500-pound ass in your face. You can't move it.